Good afternoon, everybody. This is Latasha McMiller here, and I wanted to um, just share some revelation with you guys when it comes to um, spiritual blindness. There's a lot of people out here who are in a religious mind frame and in a religious state that they have boxed themselves in a box, and they put the Bible and the Word of God in that box with them. And in that box, there's only four corners, and the top is closed. Nothing else can come in. Nothing else can get out. And in that, you you hinder revelation from God. You put limitations on God. And really what it's saying is, is really pride because what you're saying is, I know everything. I see what I need to see, and can't nobody else tell me differently. But we have to be a people, especially walking in the Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, you have to be open to the Spirit of God, and you have to move with whatever it is that God is doing. And I wanted to um, just read a, a passage to you um, along the lines of spiritual blindness. And uh, what had happened here is Jesus had just healed a man who was born blind. And, of course, every time he did something good, the Pharisees and the Sadduc Sadducees were always there on the scene to try to discredit truth. They try to discredit Jesus. And so um, what happened is we're in uh, John 9 and we're going to start in verse 35. And it says here, when Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, Jesus found him and said, this is the man that he healed that was blind. They had called him into the synagogue and they was asking him all kinds of questions as to how he was healed, who healed him and, and all that stuff. And so at some point they just threw him out. They, they just threw him out. And um, Jesus had found him, and he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he asked, Who is the Son of Man, sir, so that I can believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The Son of Man is the one talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. Then the man worshipped Jesus. Jesus said, I came into this world so that the world could be judged. I came so that the blind would see, and so that those who will see will become blind. And some of the Pharisees who were nearby heard Jesus say this, and they asked, Are you saying that we are blind too? And Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But since you keep saying that you see, your guilt remains. So what what's going on here is that they take they took the things of Moses and their own man made laws and they shut everything else after that off in spite of God saying that he was going to do a new thing, in spite of God saying that he was going to send an appointed Messiah, the, the, the Lord was right there in their faith. And because they had boxed in the things of God, they missed them. They totally missed it. They missed what God had done. In spite of them seeing how, how the good works that Jesus brought, the miracles that Jesus was doing, they just had it in their mind that our truth is our truth and there's nothing else. And in that, they box God off. And it turned into pride. And the Bible makes it very clear that God gives grace to the humble. But he resists the pride. They were very prideful. The very things that Jesus did, you know, to set mankind free, they were totally opposing it. They were totally opposing it. And if you have that mind frame, I heard a, mess, I heard a message a couple of weeks ago. And the minister said something along the lines of, I would rather be a sinner than to be a religious fanatic. And I, I, I held on to that, and I was just trying to comprehend it. But I understand today exactly what he was saying. Because for me, I would rather be. I, I see religion, and it's, so, it's such a turnoff. Like, who wants religion? There's no truth in it. There's such bondage in it. And people who are religious, they're usually mean. They're mad. They have no help or hope for anybody else. They're judgmental, critical of others. And it's like, who wants that? And, and in that statement that that minister made, I understand what he was saying. Because for me, I would rather be a sinner too. At least being a sinner, there's some form of hope for me. But when you're in a religious mind frame that you have truth, your truth is the only truth, your knowledge is, is, is nothing else can, can change your mind about what you think you know, but what, what's happening is you're leaning on your own understanding. And the Bible tells us not to do that. We have to move with the Spirit of God. We have to go by God's revelation and the understanding that He gives us. 
But when you have this religious mind frame and there's no spirit behind your religion, then you're totally missing out on God. You're totally missing out on God. And I would just encourage you today, if you feel that you are bound by a religious spirit, go to the Lord and ask him to set you free. Ask him to show you if there's anything that you're missing that you're not seeing to open your eyes to see what you need to see. Don't, don't be so proud and, and, and think that you know it all. None of us know it all. Even the best of the best don't know it all. God is doing things daily that we have to be open to the Spirit about. The, and the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus did so much than what is written in the Bible. And John said that there wouldn't be enough books to write about all the things that Jesus did. So just because you don't see it in the Word of God don't mean that it's not, it didn't happen. And it's not there. You have to, the, the Bible is the basics. That's all there is. The Bible is the basic. It's basic for our living. And I know that, you know, some revelation God only gives to other people because he knows those certain people can handle it. And the Bible for us is the basic. So, I mean, it, it's the foundation. If something comes your way and it may not be in the Bible, but it lines up with the Bible, seek the Holy Spirit about it. He'll let you know if it's truth or if it's not. So I, I just really want to encourage you guys who may be bound by religious spirit. You guys who may think that there's nothing else more to the Bible. There's nothing else more to God than what you have already read. And, and you know it all. You don't know it all. None of us knows it all. God has greater things that's coming. He, I mean, you know, from Gen Genesis to Revelation. There, there's things that have not, there's things that have taken place and then there's still things to come. So I encourage you that if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior and to send you the Holy Spirit who is our helper. And it is his job to lead us into all truth. Amen. So I would encourage you just to humble yourself and to ask the Lord to open your eyes, to take the blinders off your eyes, that you may see what it is that you need to see when it comes to the things that's of his kingdom and the things that's of the, of the Christ-type life. Jesus said that he came that we can have life, and we can have that life more abundantly. There's no reason why you shouldn't be living your life to the fullest and experiencing the promises of God. So I just, I just truly pray that you would just take the time to examine yourself. And ask the Lord to show you what you need to see. Amen.